Hey folks, Mark from Sea World Earth, aka Architog, and today we've got a pretty uh, nice theme for you guys. Um, I'm out photographing Okinawa, but tonight I'm going to be photographing Naha City, but from above. Now, I don't mean from a helicopter or an aeroplane or anything like that. I mean from a, an observation tower that is in the Eurosway section of the, the city. Uh, we've got a commanding view out over, the, over uh, Naha, as you can see. There we go, and tonight I'm going to be shooting this using a filter, a relatively new filter from the uh, people at Canny Optics, um, and it is a filter that is meant to reduce the amount of light pollution you get when you photograph uh, scenes such as this with urban environments uh, in the mix. So um, we're going to be shooting with and without filters, side by side and just later on then when I get back to the computer um, it will be a comparison of the shots to see what works and what doesn't. So uh, without further ado I'm going to get set up. I've got a little bit of time to kill uh, before the night kicks in so let's get a little time lapse going. <laughs> GoPro set up and I'm running a time lapse with that but before we uh, get going I've, I've also got to wait for the uh, night to drop anyway um, so I'll just explain a little bit more about what it is that we're doing here today I'm shooting tonight on my uh, EOS 5DSR 50.6 megapixels of awesomeness fitted to that I've got a 15 millimeter IRIX f2.4 okay um, just a really nice lens to get as much of this urban scene in as possible um, on that i've got fitted a canny filter holder okay um, and that is fitted by way of their own proprietary 95 millimeter adapter ring um, i'll put all of the links to to the gear that i'm using for this shoot in the uh, description below so be sure to check that out um, tonight i'm going to be shooting with this or through this, in fact, this is their, um, a filter that is called, let me read this because it's a bit of a mouthful, the Prevent Light Pollution Filter, okay? And it does, or it's supposed to do what exactly that. When you're shooting the urban environments, you'll notice normally there's a very strong tinge of yellow-orange because of the amount of halogen gas that we use to illuminate our cities. And halogen gas is a very warm gas, which means that it, it glows orange-yellow. We generally tend to see that as white because we're conditioned to see or, or think that that light is white, so we see it as white. Okay, clear and simple. This is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. That simply slots into my filter holder in front of the lens. And what it is supposed to do, and we'll put it through its paces, is it's supposed to reduce the amount of um, light pollution that you get uh, when you're photographing scenes that have villages, towns, or even cities, um, or the influence of them through light pollution in the shot. Okay, so what we'll be doing a bit later on is shooting back-to-back -back images with and without the filter and then later on uh, maybe tomorrow morning um, we'll go to the computer and we'll look at those images side by side and we'll see what works and what doesn't work. Okay, well, we're getting close to uh, shooting time. The light's dropping off nicely. Um, one thing that's going to be pretty awesome, I think, is the time lapse that I'm still shooting um, because when we came here, when we got here, the, the, the cloud, we were just under this blanket of grey. Uh, and in the 40 odd minutes that we've, since we've been here, the sky is just kind of, the clouds just kind of fractured up. We're starting to get some nice oranges and yellows in between those cracks. Um, sadly, we're not going to get a great sunset tonight, but you can see that when the sun's setting behind, it it's shining up some beautiful oranges uh, through the clouds probably got about another 15 20 minutes to go uh, before we can actually start shooting the main uh, images uh, but like I said it's, it's nice just to notice all of the nuances of change uh, in a location when you are waiting to shoot you 
you can see that I'm, I, don't, I don't want to have too high, too long a shutter. Um, so I've, I've upped a little bit to ISO 200. I'm, off, I'm, I'm on F8. Uh, it gives me a two and a half second shutter. Okay, and I'm, I'm metering as normal. Okay, so already the, the light now is starting to drop really, really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to have to up my ISO. I don't want to have a crazy long shutter. Let's go to ISO 320. Okay, just so that I can retain my two and a half second shutter speed. Okay, um, I've set my lens to infinity and all I need to do now is press. I'm on a two second delay timer just so everything's nice and solid when I take the photo. And uh, there we go, there's the result. Now we're shooting pretty much in what we term as the blue hour. Um, all of the neon lights are on, uh, but you're still getting um, quite a a consistent element of blue, especially in the uh, sky. Okay, so that's our composition. Hope, I'm hoping that maybe these skies, because I might do a really long shutter later on, uh, and if we get any kind of movement in these clouds, that should look quite nice with that composition of the city there. Okay, well, as you can see, night's fallen. Uh, we've got a really nice vista behind us of the city of Naha in southern Okinawa Island um, and what we're going to do first off we're going to take a shot without the filter okay I'll tell you my settings because I've changed my idea a little bit about the shoot um, I do want to get some streaky lines but the other um, prominent aspect of this shoot is that we've got some low-lying clouds which are moving quite quickly uh, across the sky and with an extended shutter we should get a really nice effect with them streaking over the sky um, so first off we're going to take one shot without the filter and then we'll adjust the filter and put that in. Um, the settings are f8, ISO 200 and a whopping 20 seconds so that we can fit all of the light in uh, and get the nice uh, shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our first exposure. That first exposure came out really, really nice. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the same settings. I'm just going to put the filter in. Okay, let's put that slider into the slot closest to the lens. I'm just going to adjust the shutter speed very slightly just uh, to compensate for about a third of a stop um, of density that this filter occupies. All right, so we are at Twenty five seconds, F eight, two hundred, two second delay timer. Off we go to the races. So there you go. We've had uh, taken a couple of shots, one uh, with the filter and one without the filter. Um, there's a couple more, um, there's a few more uh, compositions that I also want to grab, um, maybe with this lens or with another lens, uh, the 70 to 200. Uh, but what we'll do is I'll go back to my studio tomorrow morning um, and we will look at the raw files, so without any editing, just to show you the difference between the, the shots taken with and without this uh, this filter and uh, you can be the judge and make up your minds as to whether or not it's something that works for your imaging awesome a bit of a crazy ride. Uh, well, I'm back in my office, it's the next day, um, and what I want to do now very quickly is just go through with the computer uh, and just take a look at the back-to-back uh, -back view of some of the photos that I took last night. So let's jump into it. Let's just fire up uh, Lightroom and I've already loaded this up just to um, 
just to save time, um, what we've got are two images, comparison images. One on the uh, left here is the image that was shot without the filter. And on the right, we have the shot that was taken with the filter. Uh, and what you can see clear as day. Now, I must just uh, admit that I have ed edited these images, but only insofar as uh, adjusting the uh, rotation, the horizon. It was a bit skew if, uh, and my uh, OCD doesn't allow me to show images with a, with a wonky horizon. So uh, I just straightened up the horizon, but that's all I've done on these images at the moment. Um, so on the left, we've got the image taken with uh, without the filter. And what you can see very clearly as soon as you look at it, um, is the very kind of like orangey uh, yellow glow that's emanating from most of the street lamps or most of the street areas uh, into the distance. You've got the big lights on the horizon there. Um, very, very um, warm uh, lighting, uh, which is uh, the issue with halogen gas. It's a very warm gas, okay? So that burns very yellow, very orange, and that's very apparent in this image here. Um, if we then cast our eyes to the image on the right, okay, this is the um, image that was taken with the filter and you can definitely see a shift to a more kind of blue, magenta, cooler look uh, of that image. Um, for the most part, uh, I, I, it's, for me, a lot more pleasing to the eye or a lot more, yeah, kind of closer to what you'd expect to see a city at night time. Yeah, um, we can zoom in a bit on, on this image um, and what we've got here, if we go look at the distance there, you see those lights, while they are still um, orange, uh, in the filtered shot, what you'll notice that the sky around them isn't really um, that affected too much by that orange glow, whereas in the uh, unfiltered image, uh, the sky around those lights is very very orangey yellow in its uh, in its tone okay uh, if we where am I? come down to the street level yeah you'll see again any areas that are affected by the reflected light from the lights are going to be quite orange as you see on these buildings here um, but that is reduced greatly in the images uh, that are filtered that are using the filter you'll see this big image this uh, big building here sorry um, you'll see this big building here is, uh, is is quite blue, it's quite, whether that's its real colour, um, but you'll see that it's not as overly influenced by the orange-yellow halogen uh, reflection uh, as the images in this unfiltered shot. Um, what we can do also is just quickly take a look. What I want to do is just compare another couple of images um, that I took a bit later on with the 70 to 200, uh, that's these two images here. Um, and it's not a particularly pleasing comp composition, as it were. I just I saw it and I wanted to just use this as a, as a very defined example of um, the results of using this lens. Again, with this particular shot, there's been absolutely zero um, interference with it. There's, I, I didn't need to do any horizons as I did with the previous one. Um, but what you can definitely see here is uh, there's very much... Um, a difference in the, oh look someone watching TV <laughs> um, there's very much a difference in uh, the colour aesthetic of the image um, in the unfiltered shot this time on the right hand side of the image um, as compared to the filtered shot on the left hand side uh, very orangey glow again from the halogen uh, in the right hand image and a very kind of more pleasing bluey uh, reddish kind of color I guess to the image on the left uh, and what you will notice is that okay whilst there may have been lesser traffic um, from one shot to the next what you will will see is that the red tail lights of the uh, traffic that were in the left carriageway seem to be more defined um, and a lot richer uh, in the image uh, in the filtered image than in the unfiltered image, okay? So I, I think that the uh, filtered image um, gets you closer to an aesthetic that would be pleasing to the larger majority of people um, as opposed to um, the image that is unfiltered. So the ball's in your court, you know, it's down to you guys. If you feel that this is something, that this is a lens 
that appeals to you. Here we have a larger, bit, larger view of the uh, unfiltered shot of the main city shot. And if I then toggle to the right, you'll see the filtered shot. And in the sky, I mean, still some blemishes and whatever that need to be taken out uh, before I um, put this image onto the uh, online. Um, there's still some streaks from the aircraft. There's a couple of lens flares. Um, and there are a few stars in the sky, which are awesome. Um, but for the most part, yeah, this is uh, the result of shooting with the uh, light pollution reduction filter from Canny Optics. Guys, that's it for this week. Um, all I'm going to say now is thank you very much for watching this further installment of Photographing Okinawa. Please feel free to subscribe and uh, get updates as to when the next video is going to come along. It's going to be awesome and I want you to be there. Cheers guys. Take care.